Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode three of Scouting for Chelsea on Chelsea Perspective. But before we continue, please smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and more importantly, click on the notification button so you don't miss anything. So, let's get into it. Tehran, welcome back to Chelsea Perspective. Thank you very much for having me back on. I've always loved to come on this channel. Great insights, great guests, great hosts. So what's not to love? My pleasure. I always like to have you on to talk football with you. So Tehran, please take some time to introduce yourself and let the viewers know if you have anything going on or if you're planning to start anything new. Yeah, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, yeah, currently I run my own podcast called The Perfect Hat Trick on Spotify and Apple and YouTube. And we do daily podcasts right now regarding the Euros. So for the last 11 days, every single day, we've recorded a new podcast reviewing the three games of the day before. So, for example, yesterday we reviewed the Netherlands versus, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, and Belgium game as well. And we talked about some key talking points, injury news, updates, stuff like that. And, yeah, we're doing this every single day of the Euros. On Thursday and Friday, I believe, when there's, when there's no game, We'll be talking about a review of all of the group stage games, so stay tuned for that. And then there'll be round of 16, quarter final and final action. So if I was you, I'd check out the Perfect Action on Apple and, and Spotify. Yeah, I've got to say it's uh, truly a, gr a great podcast. I've been listening for it. And, and since I started listening to it, I haven't missed a single episode. So I advise you go check it out. You will not regret it. Uh, so, Tehran, um, what player did you scout and why do you want Chelsea to sign that player? Yeah, the player that I've shown Scout, I'm sure a lot of people know about him if you've watched the Euros a lot, especially in the Netherlands, is Denzel Dumfries. He's been by far one of the standout players of the Euros so far, playing the right wing back position. Uh, if you play fantasy football, you'll know he's top of the leaderboard for his goals, assists, his clean sheets. Um, you know, there's a lot of debate over Ashraf Hakimi, over Dama Troyo right now as being quite high price options. Denzel Dumfries would be a cheap alternative, but from what I've seen from so far at the Euros, he's much more capable of playing a right wing back than many other players in Europe. So, yeah, for me, he's a cheap alternative to Ashraf Hakimi and Traore. And also, from what I've seen, he's one of the most talented right wing backs in world football at the minute. How old is he? Uh, Denzel Dumfries is 25 years of age, so he's at a good age. He's about to hit his peak. He's a bit experienced. He's not too young. He's not too old. It's a good age for him to develop for five, six, seven years. Hmm. So, I understand you want the club to sign him, and because you've been following him since the Euros, and, and you've seen how good it's been for the Netherlands. So, the question is, what does he bring to the table? You said he's a right wing, he plays at uh, the right side, right wing back, right? Mm. So, what does he bring to the table that uh, Rhys James and uh, Cesar Aspliqueta don't already offer the club? Yeah, sorry if you hear my dog barking. Um... Yeah, Dumfries is a player who knows the right wing-back role to a T. We've seen Rhys James this season. He's maybe not gone forward when we've needed him to. He's maybe stayed back. He's stayed too far too deep. To, he's not taken on his man. Dumfries will take on his man. He knows when to make the inverted runs. He gets into the box to get goals, assists, headers. You name it. You saw the Ukraine game in the last minute. He scored a header. Asper Lequeta obviously is not seen as a long-term option in that position. If you think about a right wing-back, you think of a player who's going to drive a player, who has pace, to be in both boxes in a, in a second like that. Hakimi showed it, and Dumfries at this tournament has been Netherlands' standout player by a mile, along with Wijnaldum. So, yeah, he offers more going forward than Rhys James, and also his defensive capabilities are very underrated as well. He doesn't let many people run past him. He's very solid. You know, he's almost that rounded right, a right wing back that Thomas Tuchel can use. Tuchel likes players who can really cause a lot of danger in the attack as well, which James hasn't managed to do. Hence the Hakimi rumours. And, yeah, Dumfries is seen as a player who can... Do everything you need in the right wing right position. Anything you need, Dumfries can do it. Hmm. So let me ask you this question. Um, would you say, uh, overall, would you say he's he's better than Cesar Aspliqueta and Rhys James? <clears throat> yeah, in the right wing back role, yeah, he is definitely is. Rhys James is, for me, a right centre-back waiting to happen. He has a build, he has a strength, he has the reading of the game. Aspliqueta is not seen as a player I want to be starting for too many years in the future now. He doesn't seem to be a title winning right back or right wing back, right centre back. Dumfries is better than Aspilicueta. His pace is better, his agility, his balance, his running into the box, his goals and assists, everything in the attacking side of the pitch is better. 
obviously Aspilicueta is one of the best at reading the game in the whole of England, the whole of Europe. So not many players can beat that. But in terms of a right wing back role, a player who's going to drive at people and take them on, he does that better than Rhys James, better than Aspilicueta, better than Livermento, even if you want to bring him into the bait right now. He's better than all these three players. Mm. And, you know, Rhys James is a guy who I rate extremely highly, but I see him more as a right centre-back who can make the overlap and runs when he needs to. Dumfries will cause issues to every defence in the Premier League. No doubt about it. Hmm. Uh, and uh, and uh, I, I I like it that you say that he's a cheaper alternative to Ashraf Hakimi. And um, I think the club may want to, they might want to look at him uh, because the, the case of uh, Ashraf Hakimi, the question is, why are we seeking the signature of a player if the rumours are true that uh, he, he prefers or uh, he prefers a uh, Paris Saint-Germain to Chelsea? So if that's the case, why are we going after him? We should just let it go. That's that's enough reason to say, okay, you know what? You don't want to play for us. We don't want you. It's as simple as that. But that's, by the way, can you please take some time and, and give us an overview of, of his uh, Denzel of give us an overview of Denzel's uh, statistics, please. Yeah, his stats are decent this season. I say when I read them out, they won't stand too too you know out there and think, wow, what player Kmete Kimi? Two goals and six assists for PSV this season in a league that you know is not too thought about a lot as a as a league in the top you know leagues in Europe. But at the Euros, what I've seen from him is already two goals at the Euros, um, two big big goals, and he won a penalty in the game against North. I believe it was Austria, in fact. He won a penalty in that game. So his stats this season aren't all out there, but you can see in the way he plays, the way he takes players on, his agility, his balance, all of his stats, that he will be great in the future. And this Euros, we definitely won't be the other, the only club circling him. Hmm. And, and I guess uh, you can say um, six assists in, in a season isn't bad at all, you know. Uh, hmm. uh, how many does uh, Rhys James and... Uh, 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 what's uh, says Aspilicueta? How many assists did they have combined together? Yeah, I'll check now. Um, Aspilicueta, I believe, this season uh, doesn't have many assists. I, I can imagine it's two, three maximum. Let me just double check. And Reese James as well. Uh, Reese James, you know, he doesn't get many goals, he doesn't get many assists. If you look at Aspilicueta this season in the Champions League, he's got zero goals, zero assists in the Premier League, one goal and two assists, which um, is not really great for how attacking football we play. If I bring up Reese James's stats right now, just give me one second. Reese James's stats as well are not really impressive this season. If you look at his Chelsea stats, Champions League, no goals, no assists in the Premier League, one goal and two assists. And you know the football we play, these players have a lot of chances to get goals and assists. When we're not a low block team, we're a high intensity, high pace, high up the pitch team. And you know, Reese James and Aspi should be getting more more goals this and this. There's no doubt about it. And Dumfries in this system. I'm not quite sure how PS PSV like to play if they play five at the back, if they play high up the pitch. But six assists is not bad for a fullback if you think about it. Yeah, it's not it's not bad at all. That's uh that's uh you don't that's no uh there's no argument about that. Six assists mm -hmm. from a, a right wing or left wing back, right? That's uh right wing back isn't bad at all. It's uh I mean it's a it's a good return. Okay, how about uh his transfer value? Mm. Yeah, when, when I read this out, again, people are going to think he's some kind of nobody, but 14 million euros, which I believe is only around, I'd say, a roughly 9 million pounds for, for Dumfries. But obviously, when they see Chelsea in there, they're going to try and put up the transfer value. But for Erdovizzi players, we saw with Hakim Ziyech, we brought him in from Ajax, and that's not PSV. He was in red hot form last season, Ziyech, and we only had to pay around 24 million pounds for him. I would not be surprised if we pay upwards of 12 million for Dumfries if we're linked with him. Because, you know, this is an Erdovizzi player, 25 years of age. He's not got mad numbers this season. But again, at the Euros, his value could go up. We've talked about this pre-recording that he's been electrifying at the Euros. You know, millions of people watch these games. Scouts, club officials, owners, all people like that are going to watch these games. and see Dumfries being a main, main player. So from what I predict, it would be around 15, 16 million pounds to bring in Dumfries. And I think, you know, I can all agree, compared to Akimi, who would be 60 million plus Alonso, uh, you know, Adama Torre would be 40 million approximately. He's a cheap alternative. In my advice, he does the job just as good as them two. Yeah, I, I, I don't blame you when you say because of the price, people probably think he's uh, no good. You know, it's uh, not, it, it's, that's, um, that's very common in the football world right now. If the player is not expensive, people hardly see that player as a good player. But I think there's enough that has happened at the club for us to learn that uh, 
good players that don't have to be expensive. Uh, uh, Cesar Spilicueta himself is a very good example. What a nine or is it nine or eight million pound signing he's been for the club, you know, and, and uh, uh, Eden Hazard also didn't cost us that too much money. So I think it would be a, a, a good, like you said, a good alternative to Ashraf Hakimi and we don't have to spend that much money to buy a good uh, player. So another question for you is, do you think the club will be able to secure his signature? Because right now he's, he's, at, uh, he's at the Euros and he's been doing quite well. And the truth is, it's not just you that have been scouting him. There are other people who, who, who's been, uh, who, who've been watching him who probably might want to go for him. So do you mm. think it's possible for the club to sign him if they look at him and see that he fits a profile of player that will do well under Thomas Tuku and, mm. and, and uh, fit, fit uh, well in, 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 in our system of play? Yeah, I mean, anyone who plays fantasy football, like I said, will know, um, not Hakimi, sorry, Denzel Dufries is a very good player. Uh, I'm sure a lot of club officials must play. It's not a secret. I'm sure Marina Granovsky must have a cheeky fantasy football app on her phone at times to to watch it. But yeah, I'm sure definitely I'm not the only person who's seeing how good this guy is at the minute. Any team who plays a five at the back, even a four at the back, which he's played before as a right back, you've seen that Dumfries is a really, really capable attacking fullback. And, you know, definitely not Chelsea. There's going to be other suitors. But if I'm sitting there playing for PSV, and I hear the champions of Europe are going to come knocking on my door. You know, I'm going to do whatever it takes to push that chance over the line and tell my club I want to leave. And I'm sure PSV are not in the best financial state, I can guess at the minute, due to COVID. I know a lot of Erdovizzi teams, a lot of Serie A teams are having financial problems. So if Chelsea are coming in with a decent decent cash offer, they're going to accept it more, more or less. 15, 20 million would be more than enough to push this player over the line. And, you know, that's, that's piss for Chelsea at the minute uh, to, to sign. Okay, should uh, uh, should we sign him now? We'll have three players uh, in, in the same position. That is the right wing back. So it's Asplequeta, Reese James, and then Denzel himself. How do we solve that problem? How do you think, mm. what do you think Tuku would do to keep the three of them happy? Yeah, that's that's a difficult question. I mean, that that is something that's going to be talked about a lot. Will Rhys James come straight in after the Euros to right centre back role? Well, you know, Thomas Tuchel talked about Aspi being a main member of the squad since he's come in. I'm pretty sure Aspi's played every single game for Chelsea since he's since he's come in. And maybe Chris yeah. and Rhys James have played a few. So yeah, it's going to be weird to see Aspi dropped. But you know, all good things come to an end, in my opinion. When John Terry left in, I think it was 16, 17, when Conte came in, then you know he was still on the bench. Um, Pardon me. He was still on the bench, kind of, um, you know, cheering up the players at halftime pre-game. He got David Luiz playing well. He got, um, you know, all these other players, as Liquetta and um, left centre back playing well. So yeah, it's interesting what's going to happen with Aspi next season. I predict that Reese James will be trained to play that role in the summer to be a right centre back, and we will sign a right wing back, whether it's Dumfries, Hakimi, or Adam Arturo. We will have a right wing back next season, and Reese James will be a right centre back. Aspi will be that kind of rotational cheerleader from the side but also be our captain from, from the bench. I think you can, you can actually argue the aspects that um, Calibar, that is, is that he's got that uh, uh, JT's character. If he's not mm. playing or if he's playing, whatever happens, he's always supporting the team and he's mm. a great professional. And like I said, I, I do believe that he understands that all good things come to an end. And besides his... You know, he's edged his name uh, uh, in the book in Charles on Charles's book of records. He's he's a legend, no matter what happens. And uh, I, I think it makes sense that um, he's probably the one that will see play less games. So it it all depends. With uh, you know, we're not Thomas Tuchel. He knows how best he wants to deploy his uh, personnel. Uh, uh, Tyrone, it's always a pleasure to talk football with you and listen to you talk football. And that's why I will always come back to you to bring you back on, uh, on, on the show to speak to the fans because they love you too. So, Tehran, um, please take some time again. Introduce yourself. Uh, uh, tell the fans one more time what you have going on or if you plan on introducing a new program on your podcast. Yeah, right now, thank you again for giving me the opportunity. It's just the Your Only Fan series at the minute. Um, I forgot to mention, we don't do long kind of hour, hour and a half episodes. It's only 15, 25 minutes, 25 minutes per episode. But I have loads of special guests coming on. We've had Coach Shelley himself come on. We have a lot of different guests coming. If you want to come on the show, uh, 
again, the doorbell, uh, uh, just reach out to me on Twitter. My name is just on my thing here at CFC Taron. Just hit me up on Twitter and I'll definitely bring you in on one of the, the 20 shows we have remaining. So apart from that, you know, I'm going to sign out here. But thank you guys for, for having me on the show as well, all the audience. Thank you for finding the time to be here, as always. And uh, I can't thank you enough. So, guys, please don't forget to check out his podcast. And I'll also make sure to leave the link to the Apple podcast and also the Spotify version of it. You, you, and there's also the web version of it in case if you don't have access to, to Apple or, or uh, Spotify platforms. It is amazing. I've listened to a, a few of them myself, and I'm still listening and I wouldn't. I, would, I can promise you, I will not stop. But you have to go check it out, and you will not be disappointed. Again, please don't forget to smash that like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't, and more importantly, click on the bell notification button so you don't miss anything. Tyrone, it's a pleasure having you on again, and I appreciate your presence. Thanks again, my brother. Thank you. Thank you.